From Ellis Field, one of college soccer's fastest playing grounds, to the Maroon Militia, where the roar of the 12th man can be heard for miles. From all Americans to conference championships, from its early beginnings to annual success. 25 years in the making, this is Texas A&M Soccer. Texas A&M kicked off their 2017 silver season facing off against eight non-conference opponents, including a tribute to the fight against childhood cancer in their annual Turn It Gold game. Though they faced early challenges, the Aggies came out on the other side of a demanding preseason with a sense of urgency, grit, and determination as they turned their attention to SEC play. After falling to Auburn 1-0 to start in the league, A&M hosted the sixth-ranked Florida Gators in a highly anticipated matchup. Arietta takes a shot and has the ball! To take the kick for the Aggies, uses her left foot. Marquise was out for line and what a goal! The 2-1 victory over Florida not only sent notice to the rest of the country, but it also kicked off a historic win streak for the maroon and white. The Aggies carried momentum into Columbia, Missouri, looking for their first conference road win of the year. Haley Pounds found the back of the net twice, her second goal coming just 22 minutes into the first half. After Missouri cut the lead in half, the Aggies would find themselves down a player for the final 34 minutes. With the odds stacked against them, the Aggies responded by dominating the Tigers to finish, outscoring them 3-0 over this span en route to a 5-1 victory. Allie Watt and Michaela Harvey tallied goals and Sienna Arietta scored her second goal in as many games, earning SEC Offensive Player of the Week. Back at Ellis Field, the Aggies hosted Arkansas. Allie Watt waited only 98 seconds before she scored her first goal of the night and was quick to get the game winner only minutes into the second half. Throws it right down Main Street, cleared away by Arkansas. Shot taken there, and that's Allie White from the top of the 18. The Aggies showed a strong presence on both sides in a 2-1 win over the Razorback. Watts' two-goal output in the victory was enough for her to be named SEC Offensive Player of the Week, making it two straight for A&M. The Aggies took a quick break from conference play to begin October and defeated Utah Valley 1-0 at Ellis Field as Haley Pound scored for the fifth time of the season. The Aggies picked up conference play right where they left off, defeating Alabama 2-0, making it five consecutive victories. Goal, Texas A&M, Sienna Arietta to Allie Watt. What a play. That's it on her left foot. To the head. Goal, Brittany Crabtree. The Maroon and White then paid a visit to the Georgia Bulldogs in Athens, hoping to continue their winning ways. Even a tropical storm and a weather delay could not hinder the persistence of this squad. As the Aggies came out on top, two to one. A goal by Ali Watt in the 35th minute broke the scoring seal. But the Bulldogs struck back just minutes later to tie the game in the first half. After a scoreless second half, it was Grace Piper who scored the golden goal for the Aggies with just one minute and 40 seconds remaining in the second overtime, making it six straight victory. Logging two shutouts and allowing only one goal in three games, goalkeeper Cosette Morche was named SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Back on their home turf and with over 80 former players in attendance, the Aggies took on Ole Miss at Ellis Field for their silver season reunion game. The teams went scoreless until the 87th minute when senior captain Michaela Harvey went flying by the lone Rebel defender and sent a right footer soaring into the right upper 90. 
giving the Aggies a hard-fought SEC victory. Going to take a shot. Goal! Goal. Texas A&M. Mickey Harvey buries it in the upper 90. Looking to continue their hot streak, the Aggies were set to face off against LSU and Baton Rouge as they moved into the latter half of October. Again, the maroon and white could depend on late heroics to seal the win. This time, thanks to an Ali Watt goal in the 86th minute. The one nil victory was the third straight match where the Ags scored the game winner in either the final four minutes of regulation or an OT. Keeper Cosette Morche earned her seventh shutout of the year. and The Aggies got their eighth consecutive victory, the longest stretch of wins since the end of the 2014 campaign. At Ellis Field for the final time in the regular season, Vanderbilt came in for senior day. This win would mean more than most, as the program was preparing to honor four extremely influential members. This match was paying tribute to the seniors, but it was goals scored by underclassmen Grace Piper and Addie McCain that gave the Aggies a win. The Texas A&M squad concluded the regular season in notable fashion as their 2-1 win over Mississippi State gave them their 10th consecutive victory. The team finished conference play with a record of 9-1-0, placing them just one point shy of their third regular season SEC crown. The Aggies would then turn their attention to the SEC tournament. The Aggies arrived in beautiful Orange Beach, Alabama as the second seed and were looking for their eighth conference tournament championship. Emily Bates playing it for Allie Watt. Watt scores! Watt shooting, she puts it in! Looking for a hat trick. Watt, yes! It just continues for Texas A&M. It's Mallerby this time. Breaking through, it's in. Claudette Lissandro. In goal, Cosette Morche had nine saves, and the semifinal matchup was set. A rematch with the 17th-ranked Florida Gators. The Gators were the first to send one past the keeper, and the Aggies waited until the second half to respond. And this could benefit Smith, and the Aggies rank it, Smith! She's done it! With all the momentum and continued hope for a trip to the SEC Tournament Championship, the Aggies prepared for overtime. Marquise and the Gators will have to contend with the corner, which the Aggies want to play through Richie. Arietta was getting ready for it. Oh, it's an own goal. Texas A&M is through to the championship. And the Aggies were back in the SEC Tournament Championship for the fourth time in their six years in the league. With two days to prepare, A&M looked towards the title match with the Arkansas Razorbacks. Texas A&M has Mallerby here. Oh, that ball goes in. It's an own goal against Arkansas. The Razorbacks didn't go quietly, netting their equalizer at the 80-minute mark with momentum on Arkansas' side. The Aggies would need to dig deep to find some magic. Bates. Under left foot. Bates across, and it's in. It's a Great goal by Emily Bates to be the difference maker in this game. With the win over the Razorbacks, the Aggies clinched their 17th conference championship in 20 years. This being their eighth conference tournament crown and their third in the SEC. This also provided the Maroon and White with their 23rd consecutive bid for the NCAA tournament. And the historic win streak continued as well, as this team left Orange Beach victorious in 13 matches in a row. With an SEC Tournament Championship under their belt, Texas A&M was given a two-seed in the NCAA Tournament. First up was the Lamar Cardinals. The lone goal of the night came on an own goal in favor of the Aggies. Keeper Cosette Morche logged two saves in her eighth shutout of the season, sending the Maroon and White to the second round for the 20th consecutive year. Up next, a matchup with a historically tough Notre Dame squad, where the Aggies would again overcome adversity late in a game. After falling behind 2-1 on a PK in the 83rd minute, Emily Bates would find the back of the net to tie it at two with less than three minutes remaining. Watt able to get on the end of it. Chipped in there by the Aggies. Bates gets a shot. Oh! And Emily Bates has tied it with 2.15 left to play. 
The Aggies and Irish continued to battle until the game officially ended as a 2-2 draw at the end of two overtime periods. The fate of the season would be left to chance in a penalty kick shootout, where the Aggies would fall just short of advancing. The 2017 season saw several Aggies earn national recognition. Stephanie Mallerby, Kendall Ritchie, and Allie Watt closed out the season with spots on the SEC All-Tournament team, while Watt also earned a place on the United Soccer Coaches All-Southeast Region first team and Mallerby on the third team. Michaela Harvey not only earned a spot on the SEC All-Tournament team, but also was tabbed as the SEC Tournament Most Valuable Player. After the season, she was also named to the United States Soccer Coaches All-Southeast Region first team and their All-America second team, marking her second All-American honor. The Aggies continued to show prominence in academics as 17 members made the SEC academic honor roll. Senior defender Michaela Paulson earned academic all-district recognition for the second time with a 3.917 GPA. Ali Watt and Sienna Arietta were among 26 players to attend the United States Soccer U23 team training camp, while Addie McCain was among 24 players to participate in U.S. Soccer's U18 training camp. The 12th man gets a little recognition too as Ellis Field recorded the highest attendance in the SEC during 2017. With coaches G. Guerreri, Phil Stevenson, and Lori Stevenson at the helm, Texas A&M soccer had yet another remarkable year. And under the leadership of seniors Haley Pounds, Michaela Paulson, Stephanie Mallerby, and Michaela Harvey, this team became a family. The 2017 season was marked with tenacity, setting new standards for the program. The Aggies finished with the highest winning percentage in school history, a 15-game unbeaten streak, third SEC tournament title, and 23rd consecutive NCAA tournament appearance in the program's silver season. The Aggies look towards the 2018 campaign with hope, seeking to build on their legacy of excellence.